decapisaw blade covers about 25 feet and 10 frames of film, or about a third of a second, which means it's traveling somewhere in the range of 50 miles per hour. Considering it was about 25 feet behind Chekhov's scientists at this point, and still doesn't catch him for another four seconds, that means to outrun it for that long, he would have to be running at least... It's hilarious that you think I would actually do the math, but there's no way he's running that f***ing fast miles per hour. Also, they show the blade passing through the same set of trees four different times. I've seen it before, and I'll see it again. Just a little bit of forestry tree beating! They must run! The president! Giant spider! Wasting your breath on exposition while running for your life. I knew the 15-second logo was too good to be true. Movie makes me pay for my unbridled optimism by slapping us in the face with a full two minutes of opening credits. The legendary Captain James West. I hope this movie just goes full names position and makes every character say the full name and title of every other character in every conversation. In fact, every movie should do this. Colonel Nathan Roy Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question, Colonel Nathan Roy Jessup. I'll answer the question, Judge Julius Alexander Randolph. You want answers, Lieutenant Junior Grade Daniel Alistair Covey? I think I'm entitled to them, Colonel Nathan Roy Jessup. Lieutenant Junior Grade Daniel Alistair Mr. Covey, you want answers? Colonel Nathan Roy Joseph, I want the truth! You can't handle the truth, Lieutenant Junior Grade Daniel Alistair Covey! See? Perfect. A bunk, shelves, and this conveniently buoyant table are all ridiculous additions to what appears to be a functioning water tower. But the sin is swimming in this water. I'm nearly certain the pH and chlorine values are way off. I can't decide if the lamer part of this joke is Will Smith pretending he would be making fishy faces to keep up the charade of making out, that she wouldn't notice he's turning his head while she's kissing him for several seconds, or that he wouldn't notice her eventually noticing him faking love to her for a few more seconds after she stopped kissing him. Next stop, New Orleans. Is there a particular reason to verbalize the destination aside from giving convenient clues to the audience and our protagonist? Holy sh**! Did you remember this PG-13 movie pulled a full reverse turtle? There's almost a full second of this package being completely out for delivery. I mean, I'm sure it's not actually the King's Richard, but how did I forget Wild Wild West with full turn scrote? Sure could use some clothes down here, ma'am. This is interpreted as throw me a hat, because an insecure naked man was funny in 1999. And it only gets funnier the more prolonged his discomfort is. They both are suddenly scared of his penis, which is super confusing because it's been hanging out for a while now and should no longer have the element of surprise. That's too many dots. Ellipses are like hockey games, movie. They only need three periods to get the job done. Hitting on someone by suckling the air. Also, get it? It's hilarious because he's hitting on a man dressed as a woman. Now laugh! Direct me to the poop, sir. I want something young and creamy. This movie is gross. You gotta be interested. You're a whore. No one likes their job all the time, and I think that is a timeless concept that even this bigoted asshole should understand. <laughs> there is no possible way that brooch had enough flower power to knock someone out. The only thing that man should have to worry about is the possible trauma of a light sneeze. Is this convenient rope track really much faster than just running? I submit not. Nitro! This is not the way you transport Nitro! To be fair, the criminals probably weren't planning on you spooking their horses, so you can't be sure they weren't going to make some final adjustments that would make it suited for a more leisurely transport. So quit being a dick about pointing out mistakes that might not actually be mistakes, you pedantic asshole. <laughs> Ear jelly. Also, did he just snort snot and it immediately dripped out of his ear pavilion? <laughs> Movie doesn't know how to use station tube correctly. I believe this shot is attempting to indicate that all of these people stop f***ing to come out and listen to this song. This seems unlikely. Movie thinks that hypnotism is a thing and that it can occur this quickly. It's not like, oh, getting a little sleepy. Yes, I'll just lay down and... <sighs> This guy was running past Jim here, making this clothesline completely unnecessary. It was hilarious and would have gotten a sin removal if it felt like a character choice and not just bad fight choreography. I'm a U.S. Marshal! Stay out of my way! Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Even if there was some sort of convenient sightline to where Smith and Klein are having this conversation away from any obvious windows, and she could somehow see both of their mouths, how did she know to be looking in that exact spot for them? Is she a mutant whose powers are clairvoyance, x-ray vision, and extreme lip reading? So Miss Lippin Reader informs me. The lip reader is named Lippin Reader. <laughs> I suppose at this point I shouldn't be surprised. Letting mindless, useless creatures wander around the White House. Also, these sheep. Somebody mind telling me what the hell is going on here? Sure, I can help. So, you called this meeting to tell these guys to work together. Even though you set up this meeting, one of them arrived in full makeup pretending to be you, while the second guy nearly killed the imposter before you walked in late, and after security didn't barge in when they heard a gunshot. Make sense? One of us was trying to catch McGrath, and the other was trying to marry him. We don't have time for this. Movie Indeed does actually have time for this. The letter was delivered today with that cake. 
It's marzipan, isn't it? Careful. Yeah, be careful. It has spiders that are trained in the art of synchronized dramatic revelation. And I don't need intelligence to tell me that. No, you'd rather rely on stupidity. So it's reluctant partners who are forced to work together and will eventually bond and put aside their differences, yada, yada, yada. Why wasn't the title of this movie just dull, dull cliche? How the hell is this penny farthing staying upright while being stationary? I won't send all the ridiculous physics in this movie, but this launch pad sends Wes straight up into the air and he somehow goes forward to the precise train car roof opening. I haven't seen licenses taken with gravity and inertia this insane since the breast physics on Street Fighter V had to be patched. This is not needlepoint. Yes, because using needles to connect metal rings seems completely absurd, and I don't know why the movie is pretending these are the most effective tools for doing this. My latest invention. I call it the impermeable. No, this is chain mail, and its invention is suspected to have occurred sometime in the 3rd or 4th century BC. If your stops a bullet, then it's definitely the best chain mail, but it's still chain mail. <laughs> If you're gonna add errant dings, we're gonna add errant cents. Why is this lever even here? Not saying there isn't a valid reason, but this movie has a terrible question to answer ratio. According to the retinal terminus theory, a dying person's last conscious image is burned into the back of his eyeball, rather like a photograph. And I had all this set up ahead of time on this train, but because of our clear and evident mutual respect, and the fact that I didn't even know we were going to be forced to work together, waited until this very moment to try the last part of it out. Also, some bullshit movie science that has been debunked many times by actual science makes it into the movie. Refraction of the lenses causes the image to appear upside down. And thankfully, I had it installed on a machine made specifically for turning the head upside down, even though I'm pretending like I'm just figuring this part out right now. This nonsense manages to not only provide a clue, but also a clue within the clue that tells them exactly when and where they need to go next. And all this convenient information doesn't somehow wrap this movie up in an efficient 30 minutes. 346 Pine Court Garden District. Also, that sure was a whole lot of bullshit to go through for what turned out to be a simple zoom and enhance cliche. That night at Fat Cans, it wasn't a difficult task to see that you weren't a woman. Basing gender on specific visual standards is probably its own sin, but even so, you yourself gendered him female up until the moment he took off the wig and you reacted like this. So maybe stop trying to sell a story the buyer has to prove is false. These breasts are a work of art, aesthetically and scientifically perfect. Using science to justify personal taste. Just one, touch one. Okay. Are you happy, Gordon? I'm touching your breasts. I knew it. He thinks they're gay. That's why we're supposed to laugh. The possibility of homosexuality. That's the whole joke. Now laugh! Buckwheat. That's your problem. Sure, we could sin the inherent sexism involved here, but the really offensive part of this is that Gordon would create a watertight bladder for these breast inserts, even though he had somehow never thought about using liquid to simulate a breast. The straps on his boob vest are the same fabric as the outside of this coat, meaning either he prepped the boobs for this specific moment, or he always wears the boobs on the outside of this coat. Again, more questions than answers. I was just going to jot down a note. You know, Gordon, I think you underestimate the convenience of a pocket. I was gonna say that! Jim West would be excellent at stealing my cinema sins. This spiderweb door pattern reminds me of the window in Doctor Strange, and this sliding introduction into the room reminds me of the Blofeld scene in No Time to Die. This is despite the fact that neither of those comparisons is really even that close. That's right, this movie is so annoying my brain is desperately trying to shout out other barely related movies it would rather be watching. Under Siege! It's me, dear friends. I can't decide if this batch Kenneth Branagh performance is the best thing about the movie or the worst. My head says sin it, but my heart says remove a sin for it. <laughs> I have a heart. Do we ever lose our sense of humor? Me giving myself a pep talk after reading the YouTube comments somehow makes its way into the script. Mr. West protagonist and antagonist meet 30 minutes into the movie and it doesn't end right here. Hypothetically, if one of them were to shoot the other, we wouldn't have to suffer through the rest of this film. That doesn't happen, so the movie gets a bunch of sins for not showing us any mercy. Well, perhaps the lovely Miss East will keep you from being a slave to your disappointment. Well, you know beautiful women, they encourage you one minute and cut the legs out from under you the next. Mr. Loveless responds to Mr. West's extremely ableist comment with an extremely racist comment, which Mr. West follows with another ableist comment that is also extremely sexist. Well, yippee f the hall, we got ourselves an Istal. Villain leaves because his feelings are hurt, instead of just killing James West right then and there. And I don't want to hear about how some villains enjoy toying with their opponent more than actually winning. That's only fun to watch when the villain's motives are interesting. Loveless just wants to build insane looking super weapons, conquer the United States, and then retire to the Northwest for some kinky cyborg sex. Ah, oh, 
talked long enough to prove myself wrong again, didn't I? Well, it still gets one sin versus the five I was going to give it. I'd follow you into the jaws of Cerberus itself. Considering Cerberus is a giant three-headed devil dog, do you mean the jaws of all three or the jaws of one of the three? Be specific with your obsequiousness, McGrath. Be specific. Are you a dangerous spy of some sort? Or just a, a handsome cowboy who likes to poke around? East tempts West by flashing her thong of the South. Except considering he's directly in front of her, this gesture seems to exist solely to point the audience's compass north. This is not how perspective works. To think that Jim wouldn't have noticed a three-dimensional human standing in a painting the second he walked into this room is downright ludicrous. Just because we're watching a two-dimensional movie doesn't mean we've forgotten the third one exists. Also, nightmare fuel aside, this gag falls flat because West has been in this room for over a minute, meaning the six men in these paintings had plenty of time to shoot or subdue him while they still had the element of surprise. After the guy in the painting somehow missed him at point-blank range and shoots East instead, West shoots another five shots, which would appear to match the five dead bodies bodies in addition to East that we see here. Great job, Mo Well, sh Hang him! This movie is so full of casual, intentional racism that I can't even tell if stuff like this knows it's being racially insensitive or not. And the fact that it comes from one of our heroes means it's a sin either way. Never drum on a white lady's boobies at a big redneck dance. I don't think the term redneck was used that much during this time period to begin with, and I'm even more sure it wasn't used in reference to the aristocracy in the South. Movie shamelessly objectifies every woman to the extent that I'm thinking the male gaze got an acting credit. Now in my native land, Georgia? Africa. Oh, f you, movie. All the way to Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. No one involved in the production of this movie took a moment to think that a black man doing crowd work at his lynching was a bad idea. Also, this scene and moreover this film are an attempt to satirize the idea of the hypersexualized black man. A problematic stereotype, to say the least, that has permeated American culture for far too long. I believe the filmmakers had the right intentions but failed horribly. With all that being said, the movie gets a bunch of sense here because sometimes comedy doesn't work, and sometimes when it doesn't work, you look like an asshole. Would it help at all if I said I thought you were a man? <sighs> There's something funny about that damn rope. No, there is not. I came to find Guillermo Escobar, the scientist, my father. That's right, the girl Gordon found in the cage is directly tied to the investigation, and he didn't know it until after he had decided to bring her along for reasons. The movie seems to indicate that West can commandeer this horse by removing one simple latch from its saddle, and that's some horse shit. Even if it was only attached in the one place, there's clearly a dual harness in front of the horses to keep them in line. Also, after leaving the horse team lopsided and half as powerful, absolutely nothing changes about the speed or stability of the carriage ride. Scream, scream, help me, do not pull my arm. <laughs> This movie is an elephant ear's hair away from being a Civil War-themed Austin Powers movie. And honestly, if it had gone just that one step further, I might be able to enjoy it. Occasionally. Barely. Ah, who am I kidding? This movie would still suck. You go straight to hell, sir! And by straight to hell, you clearly mean I'm going to stand here, silently pointing this gun at you for a bit, so you can get off a final witty retort and kill me instead. This dog solely exists to hop down for this visual joke about an RCA logo that was designed in the year 1900 that about 1.7% of the audience will get, and that is the very definition of a poor joke ROI. This tank is a very impressive piece of technology that apparently has the ability to travel back in time and set right its missed marks, because in the previous shot, the tank was obviously left to center on this target. I'm sure there are many who love this uninterrupted minute of steampunk porn, but personally, I think it stopped being steampunk the second it became steam pop and steam sold out, eventually becoming steam emo. Steemo. And now the horse and buggy has somehow been converted to a full single horse harness setup, even though when we cut to the ground shot, they will try to make it appear as if it's just been pulled by a single horse with no harness, only from the left side. I am not fooled! Week before the war ended in 65. Skip! The girls at the mansion, you know, they talk. I wonder if my hair will get fleecy in the desert. There is this Utah, anyway. You know, you could have just started with the Utah part, right? Unless, of course, it was really important to get that unfunny women are always worried about their hair joke real quick. She and I had wound up in the saddle. It's funny, I got the feeling she was much more interested in me. Men. Curvature of her buttocks and the swell of that magnificent bosom. If the power of boners derailed this train as many times as it's derailed this movie, I think we would have ourselves a prequel to Unstoppable, titled Extremely Stoppable. I know why those foreign guys were at Lovelace's party. Of course she does. Please, Jim. My father's the only family I've got. The movie spends a good five minutes of filler on convincing Jim she can ride the train with them and zero minutes developing any reasonable purpose for doing so. He's trying to sell the we'd just end up doing two-person push-ups together distraction and I'm not buying it. But at least the movie has a reason for her being here. Right? Right? 
Loveless has kidnapped a few metallurgists, so whatever he's building is going to have armor. So it's made of metal. Armor is an assumption based on other factors. He kidnapped a couple chemists, so it's going to have explosives. So it will have multiple substances. Explosives are an assumption based on other factors. Rita's father is the foremost expert in hydraulics in the world, so the thing's going to move. So he will have hydraulic components. Movement is an assumption based on other factors. What the hell could he be building that's going to make the president surrender the U.S. government? Based on the movie so far, I'm guessing a metallic self-sanitizing penis pump. She's a breath of fresh ass. She's a breast of fresh air. Artie's boner is so powerful that I'm surprised he hasn't tapped it as a source of renewable energy. I've only made one or two other little additions to your wardrobe. But I'm not telling you what they are because I've always found the script does a pretty good job of making sure they get used correctly when the time is right. This is entirely not our doing. They actually cut from this shot of the train moving on a straight track to an insert of it suddenly in the middle of a turn just to make up for the fact that it should be impossible to shoot a stationary cannon straight down a train track at another train that cannot deviate from its force pro Promethean path and still somehow stormtrooper that shit. So are we giving them a sin for fixing a mistake? No, we're giving them a sin for clumsily fixing a mistake and only fixing this one. I don't need a fully fleshed out plan, but I would like to know why West grabbed the rope in the first place. Comes in handy when the cable breaks, but if that doesn't happen, I have no idea what the intentions behind this rope are. He's so courageous. At the end of the movie, Rita tries to play it off as if she was pretending to be interested in Jim and Artemis so they would help her fight her husband. But what's the point of her acting this way right now in the middle of what feels like a life and death situation? What do you think's going full Looney Tunes for half a minute is enough to be distracted from this big f you to physics? This is honestly one of the few situations where a knife at the tip of your boot would actually be helpful. The rest of the time, it would just make it difficult to walk or run. So, it's really convenient that Artemis installed this weapon today of all days. I have them square in my sights, sire. As do I, ammunition. As do I. This movie shoehornies in more strange sexual innuendo than my third cousin Devin at Thanksgiving dinner. Still not sure what he meant by taking the drumstick to stuffing town, but I am sure it weirds me out that he was looking at the sweet potato casserole when he said it. The Foxboro Company wasn't around for another four decades after the Transcontinental Railroad was complete. So much for gauging this continuity. It's love. It's a door. Open the door. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. The only way any of this makes sense is if Rita is double-crossing Jim and Artemis right now. But nope, this is all just a bunch of contrived nonsense. Jim. And this is how this big train battle ends. Absolutely nothing that took place matters. The harpooning, the undertrain yo-yoing, none of it. She's just gonna gas them with a pool ball that could have been deployed at any time because they had to give her something to do besides looking sexy and playing dumb. Oh wait, this is still Bo. What have you done with Rita? Now it just feels like the movie doesn't believe I'm gonna sin every time Artemis is distracted by his own boner. Challenge accepted. To a no doubt, well endowed blackamoor like yourself, it must seem absolutely impossible that a freak like me could fully enjoy the pleasure of a woman. Movie feels like it's threatening to abandon the plot altogether and just have the main characters engage in a literal dick measuring contest. But having witnessed my use of mechanology thus far, wouldn't you think that I could devise something for the lower half of my body that was hard and pumping and indefatigably steely? Guys, this movie came out in theaters. Like, a bunch of them. Also, this device that is shown is not the device Loveless is referring to. This is a completely different device that is in no way sexual in purpose that someone on the production team felt needed to look like a penis. And no one was like, shoots metal discs that decapitate people. It doesn't need to look like a penis. I don't have time for this. Why does West not believe this note when they've already seen a decapitated head with the same device wrapped around its neck? More importantly, why has Loveless set up this nonsensical contraption like some kind of discount Bond villain instead of just killing them on the spot? And now we have to run. Can you run 50 miles an hour? Because we've established this is the speed of these things. Do you know what the fastest land animal is? It's this movie's editor. Because cutting this scene to bits to try and make it look like they could actually be staying ahead of these things makes him a cheetah. The collars around our neck seem to contain powerful magnets. This magnets, how do they work? Run for the gully! At what point in running through this cornfield was he actually able to see and identify the the gully. That scene was so cartoonish, you might as well have defeated the saws by having a local coyote quickly order you a bottle of Acme Magnet saw repellent. Two flying metal discs that contain no known explosives for some reason create a big fireball when colliding mid-air. <laughs> So this high-tech invention reverses the polarity of the magnet when it gets hit with a rock? Not only does that seem impossible, it means the only thing they truly needed to defeat the spinning blades of magnetic death was to run into a wall kind of hard. Gordon, when you're telling this story to your grandkids, you make sure that you leave this part out. The part where you go full gay panic? Leave that part out? That would have been smart. That's a desert wasp, one of the world's greatest hunters. She'll kill the tarantula, lay her eggs inside. 
so our babies will have some food when they hatch. Technically, it's called a tarantula hawk, or pepsis wasp, which, despite both killing its prey from the inside out, is not pronounced the same as Pepsi. We have the element of surprise. Not if you keep talking this loudly right in front of a train people could still be on, you idiot. This mega mecha spider is bullshit mechanically, anatomically, and physically. Did they just leave the train unattended without stripping it for parts or ammunition or anything? And not only that, after the harpooning, did they repair it too? This rail fails on for some time. Jim West gets shot point blank and then falls approximately 100 feet and lands square on his back. And a bulletproof vest made of f***ing mithril isn't enough to keep me from saying, he survives this? West pulls this bullet out of the inside of his vest, meaning it pierced the armor, but stopped anyway? How did Spain not lobby hard enough to get Georgia in this deal? Now they have to travel through the panhandle to get to northern Spain America, and you never want to have to travel through the panhandle! Now I'm confused, did they come back from spider napping the president just to ransack this train again? It looked perfectly fine when they left it. They have Gordon and they think West is dead. Why would they come back here? Ready? I'm... <laughs> Deus Ex, how the f*** did he adjust that costume to fit him perfectly? Get in here without being f***ing stopped and start this f***ing nonsense at the exact f***ing moment Gordon was about to get f***ing shot. Like, what the actual f***? Um, enough. Ebonio. Being prepared with a racially stereotyped naming convention for a situation as random and absurd as this. If Gordon invented a flamethrower that can be contained in a, I'm gonna go with, D cup, he's not just a great inventor, he's either cracked the Pauli exclusion principle or made some sort of deal with Lucifer himself. Save the president, we'll be fine! Don't worry, Rita, the script hasn't really cared about you as anything other than a sexual foil so far. I'm doubtful they were worried about you now. Aren't all these soldiers Loveless's men? Or at least on the side of someone in league with Loveless? So why aren't they doing anything to subdue Jim and Artemis right now? Is the movie suggesting this gangly, multi-ton spider bot climbed up and over this rock face? Because... <laughs> You asked Marshal Coleman. Well, I didn't see that twist coming. And it doesn't matter, because other than these bombs, which seem like something Artemis could have also cooked up on his own, it will have no bearing on the story whatsoever. Airplane dips out of sight as if it might have crashed, only to zoom over the camera safely, cliche. So what kind of fancy name you got picked out for this thing? I was thinking something simple. Air Gordon. Sign the surrender, or I will decimate this town! You'll destroy one-tenth of it? I think we can live with that. Yes, our heroes have arrived, directly after all the buildings have been destroyed and the people have been murdered. Hooray! Dropping bombs onto the vehicle the president you're trying to save is in. So, are these guys just down here at all times, ready to fight and kill whoever is sent their way? Or do they also work on the machines down here? Does this mean you have to train them to both be mechanics and assassins? And if that's the case, do you find assassins and train them to be mechanics? Or is it easier to find mechanics and train them to be assassins? Somebody get the Armageddon team on the phone. They'll know how to handle this. That's it. No more Mr. Knife Guy. Those are clearly swords. Your pun is invalid and you are rewarded a sin. The end of this shovel is nowhere near this guy's head when this blow is supposed to be struck. But he flies backwards anyway because the show must go on. <laughs> I believe that Loveless would give this man metal testicles. And that's the problem. I watched the stupid Frankenstein's monster wannabe's death scene about six times now and I still can't figure out what happens. Does he eventually just short circuit from the many hits to the head? Does the wrench have anything to do with it? Is there an electrical current I'm missing? This is either anticlimactic or confusing and I'm currently leaning towards anticlimactic confusing. Saving your Darth Maul walker apparatus for a big movie reveal instead of using it every other time it could have been helpful to you. Artemis spends a lot of time not paying attention to Loveless's associates, who he's just disarmed, but they politely wait for Jim to say, The chivalry's about to be tested. Before attacking him. This will set off a series of impossible bullshit events that lead to an impossible bullshit final confrontation that will resolve with another series of impossible bullshit events. It's like trying to answer the question, what if Rube Goldberg had a 41 IQ? Can it just be done already? This guy that he is hanging from is the same one he tossed out the door with the chain earlier, and the end of the chain was attached to nothing at the time. And the last time I checked, gravity was undefeated in these types of situations. I'm creating a new agency whose sole purpose is the protection of the president. This disregards when and why the Secret Service was actually created, which was in 1865 to deal with the problem of counterfeit currency. This rock formation gives the movie the finger on the way out, and never have I agreed with a geological formation more. Will Smith is doing his patented 90s closing credits rap, and by this point, we've tired of it. I'll give it this, though. Still slaps. Spiders, activate. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Gammy. Gammy Num Num. What's your name, Missy? Dora? My mother's name was Dora. Why did you say that name? 
You sawed off sadistic bastard! You betrayed us! Look at me! And understand, you don't negotiate with a tiger. You admire a tiger until he turns on you and you feel it's true f***ing nature! Where's he going? I know that. I'll tell you if you take me along. You'll tell me or I'll leave you here. Why the f*** should I? That is your f***ing job, motherfucker. But obviously, you suck at it. Gordon, what's your plan for getting this thing off my neck? Excuse me? That's what you're here for. You're the master of this mechanical stuff. Damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. Oh! Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. Don't let the ear frighten you, my little duff. I lost it to Chickamauga. Are you angry or excited right now? I can't tell. Why did it take you so long to figure it out? Captain, it's the shit assignment. Now you're gonna be my little doggy, and when I say speak, you're gonna tell me everything I want to know, understood? Who let the dogs out? Who, who? This corn is raw! 